Hello and welcome to the podcast for Real Life Heroines with Susanna Liller. Join us bi-weekly as alongside of you, we work toward answering the call, knowing that stepping into our destiny always involves going into the unknown and exploring new landscapes. This show talks about those new landscapes, what it took to get there, and the real challenges that take place for most of us along the journey. Heroines don't stay in their comfort zone. They follow their inner guidance to grow and evolve. From the School for Real Life Heroines, your host, Susanna Liller. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my podcast for Real Life Heroines, where I am so fortunate as I get to interview real life heroines who are women who take a risk to try something new, to be uncomfortable, and as a result, end up in a much bigger space than they ever could have imagined and grow themselves just as much. So thank you for being here with me and with my guest who really is so much like what I just described, Marcia Aegis. Marcia? Welcome. Thank you so much, Susanna. First of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for having me. Um, honestly, I've watched your journey and uh, I think you're awesome. Well, you and I have talked about how our journeys are very similar. And as I help you share your story, people are going to get that pretty quickly. But let me just share your bio so they have a sense of of who you are and what you've done. And as I remarked to you, so what I always do folks listening, um, is I send out a little survey ahead of time and I say, give me a short bio about what you do. Well, so my dear Marcia writes to me, wife and stay-at-home mom of three, creator of Inspire Always, contributor to Ask Us Beauty magazine. So I said, that's a very humble bio. <laughs> so... <laughs> And that's you. I mean, truly. I mean, I know that about you. But I thought, well, they're going to need to know what's Inspire Always. So let me read what you have on your website. And then um, you can add anything that you think needs to be added, Marcia. But what you have there is Inspire Always is a community. So I think that's first and foremost so important to you. Community that features and highlights amazing women. It is a kind and positive platform. How nice to be able to say those words, right? Kind and positive. That showcases women and their incredible journeys. And okay, so right now, people listening, you're making a connection with me and with Marcia. Everyone has a story oh, and everyone is special. Now more than ever, we need to support and uplift those around us. Underline, underline, ditto, high five, absolutely. But there's more, wait a minute, on her website. This website's primary purpose is to build a community and then provide that community with opportunities, tips, challenges to give back and spread kindness. What more, I mean, what a wonderful thing. Marcia, what would you add to that? Does Or does that pretty much say what you're about? I think that pretty much sums it up. I do have to say um, the community is amazing. And so um, that's through the community is how I found you. And so I do feature just amazing women. And I think we all have a story and a journey. And by sharing that, we learn and, and, and we grow. Right, right. Which you did, for sure, I know, as you took the leap to do this work because I mean the first part of this was wife and stay-at-home mom of three so just say so you have three children and just tell us who they are so I have three children um they are 27 25 and 22 um I stayed at home with them and um it was amazing and so through my husband's work we traveled to three different countries and um, as much as I love staying home with them, it was such a terrible narrative that I thought I was just a mom because I know now I'm so much more than that. So that experience was amazing. And as they've grown, um, so have I. And so I am now stepping into um, my journey. 
All right. So before you go there, and where you are now is in Toronto. We're in Toronto. Yeah. yeah. I was saying to Marcia, okay, so we're separated. I'm here in Maine. We're separated by, well, we're separated by a country. Um, yeah. So, but again, on the same wavelength. So Marcia, that was your ordinary life and the heroine's journey, how things were. And then you turned 50. I did. And yeah. something happened. So what what happened when you turned 50? Which I would say when we were talking about this, it was kind of like a call for you to call to go on a journey. But how did you react to turning 50? Well, um, I live a beautiful and wonderful life. So turning 50 was exciting and amazing for me. Um, but I just think I wanted to do something different. And I think I have given to my kids and my husband and everyone else. And so as a celebration of my milestone birthday, I decided to do something for myself. And so I leaned into doing something totally uncomfortable. I joined an online fitness group. Um, there I did a photo shoot, um, which I in a, in a million years never thought I would do. And doing that little uncomfortable steps me out of um, seeing myself in a different light, actually, and seeing that I, uh, things were possible, that I could do anything, basically. Right. And, you know, what I love about it is that you, you know, it gave you a different perspective of you. And, and that is what I, I love also your wonderful quote, that your quote is to step so far outside your comfort zone, you can't find your way back. And you <laughs> haven't been able to find your way back. Yeah. It's, it's long gone. It's long gone. <laughs> My comfort zone is long gone. Can you even imagine doing that? Well, and let me just say, because you probably won't say it, you know, you saw that you were gorgeous and other people said, oh my goodness, you know, look at you. And can you even imagine, not that that's what your journey has been about, but you saw yourself in a different light. Can you even imagine if you had done that and then said, okay, well, all right, I'm going back to living my life as a stay-at-home mom, which is of great value. But can you even imagine doing that now that you know what you've done? Yeah, no, it's it's so hard to go back because literally it's it's evolving. It's learning about myself and what I'm capable. So it was more not the photo shoot itself and the visual. It was more of me getting there. Like it yeah. was it was the journey, as we say, right? And so to getting there and to meeting these amazing people, like I said, um, Team Strong Girls is a community of women supporting women. And that that really is what sparked me to inspire always. That's what got you. So then tell, you know, so then it feels incredible. And then you get this desire to share your journey. And you said to me, and I wasn't very good on social media. And there's so much about our journeys I relate to because I wasn't either. And cheapers, I'm still not. But <laughs> but tell me, tell us what. So then you get the call, you realize there's something more, something greater you want to do. How did that unfold? So um Basically, I didn't, um, I'm not, I'm not very good on social, or I wasn't good on social media. I mean, I was going to say this, I'm changing my narrative, because the word I use now is yet. Um, and so um, there's always a possibility for growth. And so as we know, 2020 was a bit of a shit show in terms of the news, everything you read was sad or bad or, or depressing. And so I just realized, you know, when women support other women, amazing things happen. So I thought, well, I know so many incredible women. I'm just going to actually just put them on social media, share their story, you know, share a quote, which I love a good quote. And so my quote was, you can't compete with me because I want you to win too. And so through this journey, I've learned that we all have such a beautiful story. We all have this beautiful light to shine. And if we shine the light on everybody and we learn, we, we can make this world just a brighter place. So I literally just started with my friends and family and it evolved. People started going, oh, I know another woman. I And they started nominating other women. And I think that's truly how the community has grown so beautifully and organically. And, and just so on the journey, when we get these, this is what we want to do. We talk about the threshold guardians, the voices in our heads, and maybe people around you that say, you know, you can't do this. What do you think? You don't know anything about this. And 
Did you have any of that when you were starting out? Oh, for sure. When I when I started out, I first put it out there, um, and it was going great. And then more people were coming, and then social media has changed a lot. Um, you know, the uh, at first it was stories, and now it's moved more to video. So I'm trying to do, get into the reels, and then people started telling me you need to get on and show yourself. Well, that's very uncomfortable for me. So I'm trying now. Um, I turned 52 this year. So I put myself out there to show up every week um, to spread an act of kindness for every year that I have been born. So. Right. right. So let's just talk about that, that okay. you're, so you came up with, you started interviewing people and collecting these stories and these women were inspired. And I just want to say, I was so honored to be asked by you to share my story. And, and we were saying, we're not quite sure how we met but we think that just because we're doing such similar things, it was like this resonance, the waves kind of connected us. But um, so how did the 52 days of kindness, weeks of kindness come about? And what was that? Explain that to us. So really, like I said, I started featuring all these amazing women like yourself. Um, I think the word heroin that you use a lot really resonates with me. I think that's such a powerful word because I think, like I said, going back to us feeling like we are just whatever that may be. And so um, I'm featuring all these women and it's amazing. And then I was turning 52 and I thought, once again, I got the calling. I wanted to do something more. And so I do think that um, we need to spread a little more kindness in the world because there's so much going on. And so I don't know why I woke up one morning and I thought I'm turning 52. And then I thought, wow. Let's put out every week to the community one act of kindness a week for one full year and basically hope it spreads and there's a ripple effect. I do believe kindness creates such a ripple effect. Right, right. So tell us some of the things that you did. I know I remember buying a cup of coffee for somebody. What are some other things that you put out there and that and then you showcased other people doing the same thing, right? Right. Well, through a community, I think. Once again, I think community is everything. And so I started doing this and the communities joined in. So I think sharing is caring and we are stronger together. So I started with acts of like, buy someone a coffee, you know, give someone a compliment, all these things. But as I'm going through the 52 weeks, what I'm learning too is we all are busy and we all are giving and we need to start giving to ourselves. So a lot of it started with, acts of kindness to ourselves because I think that we sometimes forget about ourselves oh so God. I would be like you know put your feet up so it's just a reminder for people that we need to be kind but most of all we need to be kind to ourselves right because as every good heroine knows if you're not kind to yourself you're not going to be fully able to be who you are and kind to other people right exactly exactly razzled and um tired and yeah because we do do a lot of giving to other people and so what do you think was the most what was the most fun for you of all those 52 acts of kindness can you even say I can't even say because I think a lot of them were fun but I just think a lot of the self-kindness ones were really great um I, I one of the things I really loved is on my journey in the last two years I really learn from other people and so I, I, most of people will know Mel Robbins I think she's fabulous and she has this high five habit where you give yourself a high five and I think that was fun because it's such a silly little act but it, I think it's so powerful because how often do we high five ourselves and I'm a big cheerleader I love celebrating people um, but oftentimes we don't celebrate ourselves right it's so very true and so I, first thing, though, I don't want to forget, I want to ask you to repeat your quote. Will you just say it again, please? You can't compete with me because right. I want you to win, too. Right. So let me tell you why I love that so much, <laughs> because I think we are naturally competitive and you get into groups and maybe I don't know. I, I know men are kind of very competitive, women, too. I don't know if one is more than the other, but it gets in our way when we compete. 
and we compare ourselves with other people because you can't compare yourself because we're all so very unique. So that quote, you can't compete with me because I want you to win too, is I think that's such a good one. Thank you. Yeah. I think it's a game changer really, because I think that we all have a special light. We're all so unique and different. Yeah, we're all the same. We're all looking for that same thing, connection, you know, community celebration, but we're unique. And, and oftentimes we do compare ourselves to other people. And so um, I think we need to get rid of that comparison, shine our own light, which makes the world just so much of a better place. And so what I've learned through this whole experience is I've met so many women that are truly, they embody this women supporting women. And so one of the blessings of this whole journey too is I was asked to be a contributor to a magazine called Asuka's Beauty. Um, I, same thing, I don't know how we got connected with the editor and I, but we hit it off brilliantly and she is the exact same thing. And so she has been nothing short of um, the best supporter and um, a cheerleader for me as I am for them. Yeah, and so Ask Us Beauty, is an online and hard yes. And so you go to askusbeauty.com and you can find it and subscribe. Askusbeauty.com, yeah. On Instagram, it's Ask Us Beauty magazine. And um, they feature just incredible, incredible women. It's it's a, basically a magazine that's redefining the, the meaning of beauty. And so it's in, it's about inspiration. It's about education it's about empowerment it's basically everything that I believe in so yeah and while we're at it giving addresses so the best way for people who are maybe are listening to the sound thinking well if they're listening it, to it now then they have my show notes which will contain how to get a hold of you and where you are but it's inspire always at inspire at underscore inspire always inspire always on instagram and instagram really is your major communication channel it yeah. is okay well so marcia when we talked before there was another thing that i want to ask you about because you said to me that there was something you were chicken about that it was maybe what you were doing was your kind of chicken way of being out in the world. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do. I do. <laughs> so when I first started to inspire always, um, in Team Strong Girls, there's this, there's an expression called aspire to inspire. So basically you share your story um, to inspire others. And the truth is, I don't think I ever had a really inspiring story. I didn't think I was inspiring. And so I decided I would do what I do best and, and I would cheerlead other women. And so I've done that and it's been amazing. But um, I am starting to show up a little more. It's that uncomfortable. Um, one of the one of the goals for 2022 was also for me was to do an act of to, to do something uncomfortable every month. And so that has equipped me and prepared me to do more and more things that are uncomfortable. Yeah, if we could do a high five, I would do it right now with you because and we I think and I know, know that that's what you've been doing. So everything lines up with both of us line up exactly not only that i have the same chicken tendency that it's so much easier to find women like you and ask them questions than it is to talk about myself but just like what you said the more you do this the more comfortable you are in doing it which is the whole thing about leaving your comfort zone that eventually it gets more comfortable it's just those first steps yeah, are kind of hard. Yeah. So what about, what are some of the uncomfortable things that you challenged yourself to do? Um, there's a few of them. Like, so every month, obviously I did it for a year. Um, one of them was to jump and we have a cottage and in May the ice goes out and I jumped into the lake just as the ice went out. Um, that was very uncomfortable. Um, I've enlisted in some of, with my girlfriend, some of the things and we've, done things together which is amazing I tried pole dancing for the first time which absolutely not within my comfort zone but so much fun and so I think that's what you learn from going something outside of your comfort zone there are things that you are afraid of and my new philosophy now is to do it afraid like I am all the things that bring me joy or that 
I have a calling to, I'm, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it scared and it's going to be messy and it's going to be not perfect, but that's okay. And so included in that, would you like even like, all right, so immediately my head went to bungee jumping or jumping out of a plane in a parachute, anything involving heights, forget it. So are you saying that that might be something that I could choose? I, I mean, I can do, I've walked on fire. I've, you know, spoken in front of a large group of people. I've done stuff that more resonates with me, but do you, have you even done things that really isn't in your, what you like to do? Sorry, what was that qu last question? Sorry. Have, have you even, you know, there's the things that, oh, I would like to do that. I'm afraid, but I would like to do it. And then there's the, I would never like to do that. And I'm really afraid. Have you done stuff in that category that you really? No, I haven't done that yet. I'm actually, uh, when I first started, I was leaning towards things that interested me or, well, actually, no, to be fair, that pole dancing is not something I necessarily wanted to do. I just thought, yeah, that's not me. So I'll do it. So okay. it's a bit right. of a combination, I do believe. So you have to kind of think about it and, but the point being, it's to stretch yourself. It it's is. to show yourself that you can do whatever you decide you want to do. Yes, you can do it. And also you don't have to just, for all those things, you could sort of baby step in, right? Or did you just jump? Uh, most of the time I just jump, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but I jump because these baby sets have led me to jump, if that makes sense. So I think it is all part and parcel. Um, my two best friends, they laugh at me a little bit because they've known me forever and they know me in that old familiar life. And um, a lot of times they'll say, who are you? Because I'll be like, oh, I'm on doing a podcast today. And they're like, I'm in a, a contributor to a magazine or I'm doing a photo shoot. And they're like, who are you? And honestly, I think that is such a compliment in terms of showing that my growth. I I am actually turning into the person that I want to be, and and I'm just reaching for the stars. And so, right. Oh, Marcia, it's and so... it's never too late. That's another mm -hmm. thing. It's never too late. At 52, I think you know what? I've just begun. Like it is, it is not the. I've raised my children, and they are good humans, and my job is done. But I have a new job and a new path now, and so that's the exciting part. Would you say what I think is that it's really our job to evolve ourselves, to bring ourselves fully into that unique light that we were meant to be? I absolutely couldn't agree more. I think we need to evolve as humans and as people, we need to grow. And so I think that's where the beauty lies. And I think the more you grow, the more you step into who you really are to be a my, my my saying is always too, to be unapologetically authentic. And I think it's hard in today's society sometimes because there's always the should or the expectations or again, the comparisons. Right. Like when I started this too, I didn't know like, how am I going to navigate this all? Or what are people going to say? Or, and I care so much, but now I'm starting to care less about those things that are unimportant. Right. You just have to do what you feel called to do. Yeah. So, um, it's just again so much commonality and going back to the it's never too late I just had the opportunity to talk to a wonderful woman that had come to one of my retreats and she is 68 and she had been through a difficult divorce and had left a lot of things behind and was just sharing this story with me about meeting it's sort of like he's the love of her life. Um, and it just happened coincidentally, serendipitously. And um, it was, it just is such a happy thing when people find what they've been looking for and it's never too late. Yeah. Never too late. And I love that. Like, I love that. Yeah. So, so then, okay, what's next? I I heard a little bird told me that something's happening February 17th. Yeah, February 17th is Random Acts of Kindness Day. And so I had literally started the 52-week kindness challenge on Random Acts of Kindness Day because I thought, 
what better day to start it? And so mm -hmm. as I'm wrapping up the 52 weeks, um, 52 week kindness challenge, I realized every week is a bit difficult for people. It's, it's hard and it's, um, it's, it's difficult to do something every week, but I still wanted to do more. I, then there was a calling um, for me to create something more. So really my message is less judgment, more kindness. And I really am, I think to the, who I am to the core, I do love spreading kindness. And I think it is so important. I think there, there's a ripple effect that goes way beyond the act itself. And so on February 17th, as we wrap up the 52 week kindness challenge, I will be launching a new thing called the kindness circle, where it'll be a membership where I will have people join and together we will spread kindness. And through that spreading kindness, we will raise money for charities that need help because I love supporting different charities. So I'm just basically taking all of the loves of my life and wrapping them up together in a beautiful package because community is everything. And I think we're stronger together. So if I can create a community of givers and this kindness circle, I think that just makes the world a better place. Oh, I don't know. It's just wonderful. Wonderful what you're doing, really. And I know that you've even these since 2020 you've or even before you've been giving a lot to charities that's important work to you so yeah. now you're just bringing in more people to help you with that to do the same thing and also I you've been doing all of this just on your own I mean nobody's been paying you you don't get a big salary every month as far as I know right no no <laughs> So you are such a giver, Marcia. Um, okay, so then people will know, how will they know about these circles? What do they Thank need you. to do? Well, if you follow me on Instagram, underscore inspire always, it'll, there will be postings. But really the best way I think would be the website. I have a website, www.inspirealways.ca. Um, and I will launch it February 17th. And there you'll go. There will be a link where you can click on within that membership, you will be able to um, basically, I'm gonna cr create a calendar that we're gonna every month do something kind, whether it be to ourselves or to other things. Um, you'll see the different charitable events that I'm involved in or I'm raising money for and be part of that community. And so um, with that, you'll get a unique t-shirt too that says spread kindness and basically we'll all be belong to this community called the Kindness Circle. Oh, what a great name. I, I don't know. I'm seeing you talking to Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would, would really be awesome. Be, that would. The, well, thank you. No, well, one, of the I, one of the reasons I picked the kindness circle, I think, is because um, I do believe kindness costs nothing. Yeah. And so um, I think the kindness circle being nothing is one. And also, too, I think kindness has no end. When you, when you, when you put an act of kindness out, you feel good for putting that act of kindness out, but you don't actually don't know if there's a ripple effect that goes way beyond what you know. So it's for me, it's a full circle. Mm, right. yeah. And I think that, you know, there's a, an energy to it. When you talk about ripple effect that um, it's going to spread. And when you think about the opposite of what you're doing, that there's so much negativity and hostility and judgment out there and how do we how do we stand against it well to me it's what you're doing it's lighting your own light brightly and then starting this giving what you're you know encouraging and supporting and inspiring people to do and that I mean blend those lights together and it gets stronger and stronger I mean against the darkness right I sound like what the Lord of the Rings or something, <laughs> but I think it's really true, right? I do. I, I I do believe that you surround yourself with people and you put out goodness, and it really does come back, and it spreads. It yeah. spreads, right? I don't know. I am not, as you know, fifty-two. I'm seventy-one, but I think we were twin sisters. You look fabulous. Oh, well, <laughs> so do you. <laughs> So, um, boy, one of my dreams will be to meet you in person someday, Marcia. That would be uh, wonderful. 
that would really be one of my dreams. Actually, one of my goals for 2022 was to meet 25 of the women that I feature that I've never met before. So I actually did that too. So I'll put you on for 2023. Maybe we will meet at one point. Okay, another high five. <laughs> so as we bring this to a close, I hate to do it, but um, I know that it's time for us to leave people and I want them to leave with something from you. So if if you could say, after all that you shared, if they don't remember anything, you want them to remember this one thing that you said, what would that be? Um, I think what I would want to share is that I think, I mean, there's so many things I'd want to share. Two of the <laughs> things actually is just honestly do it afraid. If, you, if, it, if it warms your heart, lean into it and you will be great, whatever it is. And the other thing is really is to be kind. It's that simple. Like whether that be to yourself or to others. Mm. Do it afraid and be kind. And it is so simple. It is so simple. Yeah. Get it? Okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much for this. This has been amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marcia. Thanks very much. And I hope to see you again soon, one way or the other. Thank you. For those of you listening, thank you for being here. And I hope you'll join me when I speak to my next guest, who actually is going to be a hero. So you'll, not a heroine, um, you'll be wanting to tune into that. Okay. Take care. Thank you. You've been listening to the podcast for Real Life Heroines with Susanna Liller. Thank you for joining us. If you would like to connect with Susanna outside of the show, please do. You can email Susanna at SusannaLillard.com and visit the website at SusannaLillard.com. Let's get social. Instagram at Susanna Liller, Facebook, Susanna Liller, author, speaker, and coach. Don't forget to subscribe to the show for easy access to our next episode. And a like and review would be very helpful. Until next time, remember to follow your inner guidance to grow and evolve.